Let me show you my countryside through these old headlights. We can take this road as far as you want to go. Hello and good morning. We just got paid another 300 pounds for the road clearing. And today is going to be a little bit more active day uh, compared to yesterday when we are enjoying the view from the castle. Which was very nice, but it's not really progressing us any further. Um, so I'm gonna start the John Deere. I'm gonna let it run for a bit and warm up. And we're gonna go to the vehicle shop uh, because we got... Uh, a um what is, what's it called a disc harrow ordered and uh, later today someone is going to come uh with a crane and a truck uh that's going to pick up uh the tractor and they are going to disassemble the combine and take it with them so uh we're gonna get that going and we're also gonna cultivate the field over here with our new disc harrow. So I was looking at uh, cultivators and disc harrows and uh, as I was uh, talking with uh, local farmers they said that it's disc harrow is better because it turns the soil over in one direction and then in, in the next direction uh, so it's really turned over very well. Um, <clears throat> the harrow we are going to buy it's not uh, why did I turn the engine off? Uh, it's not uh, horsepower demanding. It's, I believe, it's 80 horsepower. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna start toward the vehicle shop, and I'll see you there when we pick up our new implement. Alright, and here it is. We paid 2,870 pounds for this, uh, but this is completely ours, so this is a very good thing. Uh, a new implement on the farm, and uh, it's, I believe, 2.8 meters wide and requires 80 horsepower, so it's gonna be perfect uh, for our little yard and uh, for our tractor. Um, so, yeah, let's hook it up. And let's take it home and start the field work. Now I can't really move it by hand, so I have to be uh, precise with reversing the tractor. And this should be perfect. Now let's hook it up. And this looks very nice on our John Deere. Uh, it's a roster mesh make. So the producer of this uh, this caro is roster mesh. And looks to be very good. I love these rollers behind. They uh, chop up the remaining soil if you have any uh, big lumps left. So yeah. And there is a police car stuck behind the van.
the implement is a bit wider than the tractor so I have to be careful not to um, do any damage to the upcoming traffic or uh, the road signs on the left but otherwise this is gonna be perfect I just hope the ground is not frozen because it is uh, zero degrees Celsius so ah, it shouldn't be it takes a lot of cold to fro freeze the soil another thing that it's planned for today is I'm going to call a company that does soil samples uh, they uh, come and collect the samples so uh, and send them to analysis so we see what uh, type of soil we have and if it needs any uh, corrections um, I was reading that's mostly nitrogen the plants need and uh, also different plants need different amounts of nitrogen so yeah it's a uh, it's a real science behind all this uh, but I do not have the expertise about that at the moment so I'm going to hire outside help and we'll see what we can do to increase the yield of our first field because our funds are dwindling so we do need to start making some money and uh, maybe do some contracts around help some farmers I'm not sure if uh, anything that we can actually do is uh, up on the job board or the forum but we do need to keep an eye on that so let's be careful because this thing does swing out a bit and we're in the tractor should be all warmed up by now so all that remains is see this implement in action now how are we gonna do that I think we should just follow this line in the bottom like this let's take it two gear ranges down put it into second and I believe 12 is the limit that this implement can take okay we need a higher gear Okay, let's take it one gear range up. As you can see, I'm pretty fresh, pretty new with this. Yeah, this seems to be the right uh, gear ratio. Uh, I was say, as I was saying, I'm pretty new with this, so I don't really know the gear ranges um, out of my head. Uh, I need to <laughs> to have some tries before I get the right ratio for each implement for each horsepower requirement okay this is gonna take some maneuvering because I think it's not a really great idea to uh, turn around with the implement in the soil because you can uh, break the discs off or uh, do any other type of damage but so far it seems to be working amazingly <laughs> amazingly <laughs> yeah it works great it leaves a really nice soil bed seed bed soil bed <laughs> yeah I'm still trying to remember all the expressions but yeah Alright, it does break up uh, the big chunks of uh, soil real good. 
Awesome. Okay, I think I'm going to do a time lapse. Because uh, I don't want you to be bored watching me drive up and down the field and uh, uh, taking a lot of time turning around. So, yeah. See you in the time lapse. So you may have or may not have noticed that there is some dips in the field, like over here. And there is one over here, I believe, somewhere over here. Um, and it makes the tractor jump quite a bit and I hope we'll be able to see it properly and to do everything we need to do. Yeah, over here, there is a, quite a dip in the field, the one over there. So I don't really have experience with this, but I hope we'll be able to seed it and do everything we need to do uh, in order to harvest the field eventually. I don't want to be breaking the header on a dip like this. So yeah, that's uh, one thing to be mindful about that I did not expect is going to come up. But it's understandable, you know, because under the grass that was here before, uh, a lot can be hiding underneath it. So yeah, how exciting. We did get built another leasing hour for the John Deere. As you can see in the right uh, corner in our bank account. Uh, and I believe that is deducted from the final price of the tractor, so no biggie there. Let's just uh, say it's a <laughs> payment made towards the tractor. But yeah, even though it's a cold day, it's a really nice day. Such a crisp, clear. I was looking at some cedars and there is one from Kubota uh, that is available for 7,000 pounds. It's uh, 3 meter wide and I think it can be pulled with this tractor uh, easily. But I am not sure. I don't think it's uh, warm enough already to be planting seeds. So that's gonna have to wait, but uh, we will be checking out the different uh, cedars. We don't need anything too special, we just need something to put seed in the ground. And it should be pretty cheap.
On the other hand, if we have a cedar, we can uh, rent it out to other farmers or lend them a hand. If they get too busy uh, with their farm work and they are not able to do their seeding, we can do it for them. So having our own equipment gives us options. And just seeing I missed a little spot over there. It's gonna bother me if I don't fix it. And I'll be coating all the way behind me because I left tire tracks. And good. I think we'll do one final pass over here and then a loop around the field. Okay, seems to be going well. Now if I was... I'm not if I'm not sure if I was uh, how should I say uh, precise enough? Yeah, that's the word I was searching for. Uh, but we should be able to do one loop around and uh, take care of all the remaining uh, unturned soil. It usually goes like this uh, when an implement. I have to go a little bit slower over here. I don't want to break anything. Uh, but it usually goes like this when you have an implement. When you touch the edge of the field, even if you are at an angle, uh, the uncultivated part that it's left, that tr little triangle, uh, should be small enough uh, to be cultivated in uh, one pass around the field. You see these triangles right in front of the tractors. This is what I'm talking about. And if my math is correct... Okay, I'm gonna lift. This is too much of an angle. It would be a shame to break our brand new implement. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, awesome. Works like a charm. So you see, uh, I have cultivated right to the edge, and the triangle left is small enough to be cultivated in one pass, which is ideal. And I think I hit the nail on its head with this. Or what's the saying? and lift and let's do just this final row and we are done with cultivating I'm really glad I leased this tractor because of the cabin um, it is two degrees outside and I'm very toasty in here. So let me just take a second and take a look at our field. Alright, I'm very happy with the result. Let me admire the tractor for a second. Okay, so next step is to put the... Yeah, right, I mean the lower range. Uh, is to put the disc harrow away. We still have plenty of space in our uh, sheds over there. Okay, so yeah, that is a really big dip. You can see it right under this black uh, square. I hope I'm gonna be able to fix it maybe next year. 
because now we have the soil prepared for the seeding and everything and I don't want to be um, bulldozing through So where should I put this cultivator? This carol, I mean I think this is going to be a perfect space for it If we can squeeze through, yes we can And down Great Alright Good, good. I will leave the tractor over here, turn it off, so it can cool down a bit. Um, and I'm going to call the soil sampling company and ask them to come around. And uh, then I will contact the other company, the metal, uh, that buys metal. Um, and I think they're going to come and uh, load the tractor and disassemble the combine. So, yeah, be right back. Okay, so Mark went uh, to do some paperwork and in the meantime we can take a look at this contraption. Uh, this is a soil sampler. It's a really genius thing because it uh, automatically collects the soil. You can see our three soil samples over here and this is everything they need to get a complete picture of the field, uh, what's underneath and uh, what does it need. Does it need any more uh, pH? Uh, for the life of me, I can't remember. Uh, so to adjust the pH of the soil, oh, th this is it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, to put uh, extra nitrogen in or something. So this rod uh, goes down into the soil. And it picks up uh, the sample and it dumps it into these little cups over here. Uh, which are then taken and transported to the laboratory where they test it for uh, all different... Uh, types of uh, soil and uh, what it needs so yeah this is awesome it's an expensive piece of equipment so we are not gonna buy it anytime soon but uh, luckily we do have companies that come and do their uh, thing like this <laughs> so it'll work nice, nice name nice name um, there's a band uh, from Europe called soil work they are quite heavy <laughs> anyhow uh, this was it uh, so now we wait for the results and they are gonna send us the bill for uh, their service and this is it for this part and uh, now we are going to call uh, to get a hold of the guys who are coming to pick up the tractor and disassemble the harvester. This is the third time today I'm saying this. So yeah, <laughs> this is happening next. Stay tuned.
And here they are. The truck. And this is a wheel loader with a mighty hook. That, that's, I suppose that's going to be to lift the tractor and what's left of the combine inside. So, yeah, interesting work. What a nice machine. Maybe we'll get one like this someday. But I think it's too big for this farm. We need something smaller, something more nimble. Okay, I will let the guys do their magic. And I will be back when they are about done and leaving. And they're gone. So we got paid quite a lot of money. I did not expect that. Uh, the tractor was 350 pounds in uh, scrap value. The combine was around 350 pounds because it was in way worse condition. Um, but we did get two and a half thousand pounds for the I uh, what's it called IT. Uh, runner so the the red container that was here and we did get paid around 1500 for the uh, shipping container that was over here as we can see it's uh, it left a dead patch of grass uh, so yeah we got quite a lot of money uh, and while they were doing their thing I was uh, checking some offers and there seems to be a sale of a uh, used baler and i am going to need a baler because we're gonna make uh, hay bales for the uh, cow feed uh, we still have some one two three four five bales left but we are going to need to replenish that uh, soon so let me just show you quickly what i mean the discounts are over here and this is the masker evolution baler it uh, makes 125 centimeters uh, bales and it's not in a really great shape but it's real cheap it's like 9573 and i think we're gonna take it i'm gonna take it I'm gonna take the offer. So I'll just click buy. Nine and a half grand went away like that. We still need seven thousand and uh, something more for the cedar, and there will be some expenses for uh, our um, soil improvement attempts. So uh, the nitrogen and the lime, if needed, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah. Things are going fast now. And we are going to be able to use the baler for uh, contract work. Which uh, is probably essential for us. I'm, on, I'm gonna jump in the tractor. And run. Into. Uh, run to the vehicle shop. Pick up our baler and park it home. This is exciting. A lot of new gear coming up to the farm so we really are reviving uh, my uncle's farm this is uh this is this was the plan when i came here and the plan is coming to fruition so amazing well see you at the vehicle shop okay so don't mind me running through the stop sign uh, definitely do not repeat that behavior because it's not cool and it's not okay and it's not safe. <laughs> but 
but here we are at the vehicle shop once again today and there is our bailer already waiting for us uh, the shop told me that everything is in working order and that we are we're gonna be able to use it without any major um, expenses but this is our bailer I can see the belts over here I don't know if this is good but it's uh, <laughs> easy to work on when everything is exposed like that and it also can break down easily if something gets inside it but yeah well this was unexpected and it did take quite a chunk of money out of our budget so I hope we'll be able to uh, do everything um, I'm not so usually such an impulsive buyer but this was an offer I simply couldn't refuse Coming home with new equipment. I hope this feeling will be repeated many times when we bring home our new stuff that we can work with, that we can help the farm grow. It would be fun to see uh, us buying additional land also. That's uh, also something that would be um, a key ingredient to reviving the uncle's farm but I think we're doing very good uh, up, until, up until now I think we're doing very good it's hard to make a solid plan and stick to it because uh, things are constantly changing in farming environment and in uh, with deals like this, uh, when the baler came up like 60% off or something like that. But yeah, before we start work, we're gonna need to buy some... Uh, I don't know what it's called, it's maybe twine or something like that. Uh, it's No, it's the net. Uh, that wraps the bales when you finish uh, the whole bale before it spits them out. It's this netting you can see over here. But yeah, quite an exciting time. So I think I'm going to conclu conclude this episode. Let's put the tractor in his home and we are gonna take the car load the eggs and go to the pub uh, have a pint or two and sell the eggs and have a think what we're going to do uh, tomorrow tomorrow it's already March uh, so we have to take a look at uh, the seeding options uh, the calendar if it's uh, late enough late enough in the year so we can start seeding it's probably gonna be wheat uh, because i think it gives the most amount of straw okay let's get right into it So we have 92 pieces of eggs. And that should give us a pretty penny. Okay. Carefully go out. These hedges are not really good for um, visibility. But we do what we gotta do with the things we have. It 
So I would say this was a very productive day. We got rid of the junk uh, at the farm. We only got left a uh, uh, few pieces of tubing uh, that may be useful in some uh, drainage repairs or something like that. We have a few sheets of metal that could be useful for repairing the roofs if need be. Uh, but everything else got cleared away. So we have quite a lot of space behind the barn and there are a few options we can take. Uh, I was thinking we could build a greenhouse over there. Nothing too fancy, just a small greenhouse uh, that we can put it, the fertilizer in, the seeds in and we get uh, whatever out. I think it's maybe tomatoes or salad and we can sell that all year round. Uh, another thing that we could do is uh, build an open garden, uh, but that only brings us uh, income during the uh, summer and maybe a bit of spring and some autumn time. But the greenhouse is possibly better because you can have it all year round and uh, everything grows inside because the sun heats inside and it's uh, warm enough for the plants to grow. Okay, let's wait for the pedestrians to cross. Now we're gonna be a good citizen and wait at the stop sign. Actually stop. Yeah, I, I was too excited before in the tractor, so I just ran it, but uh, please, people, don't do that. It's very dangerous. There is a stop sign with a reason. Okay, let's take the eggs, sell them, so we can all see together how much we get for that. Eighty-five pounds. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you here. Thank you all for joining. Uh, I wish everything good for you and see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>